Hey everybody, and welcome to the second video where we will continue on with unwrapping and preparing this model for texturing in the third phase. So this is basically where we left off in the first video. So in case you haven't watched that one, go ahead and check it out. All right, now, the first thing that I wanna do is just get rid of the cylinder that here that we had as a placeholder. And this is what we're left with. Now, I'm gonna delete this turbo smooth on top and leave it just like this. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and just quickly rename these two. So I'm gonna go seat underscore LP for low poly, and this is gonna be frame underscore LP. And just so we're clear, I'm just gonna go ahead and put both of these into their own layer. So call it low poly. And once I have this uh, selected, just select everything, go ahead to export and export selected. Now choose where you want this thing to go. I'm gonna go as an OBJ and call this thing my chair. Doesn't matter how you name it though. All right, so chair, click save. We don't actually need anything else in here because we're only gonna go ahead and unfold this thing or unwrap it. So click export, done. And now let's switch over to Unfold 3D and get this thing unwrapped. So here we are inside Unfold 3D. I'm gonna load my OBJ, find where we have our model exported, click OK, and there we go. It's right here so we can start exporting. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is isolate just the element. And now with this thing, it's actually really, really easy to unwrap. Since we have this corner in here, we can just go ahead and select one of these uh, edges, loop it around, so Control L to loop, and C to cut. So by just doing this, I can just click on Unfold, and right away, I have this entire seat unfolded and ready to be used. So I just gotta bring this thing away. Now, Show, and with just the selected, now I'm gonna hide it. So I can focus on doing the frame. Now for the frame, it's actually not that hard. It's just a bit of uh, repetitive, tedious work. <laughs> so all we gotta do is just select uh, two corners, loop, go over to this side, two corners, loop, over to this side, two corners, loop, over here, again, just these two corners and loop. Now we're gonna go C to cut. And the thing here is that we have to do the same thing on the bottom as well. Because once the loop comes to a corner, it kind of stops. So we have to redo it on the bottom as well. <laughs> there we go. Let's just try and get it right. So one there and there. One there, there. Loop and cut. All right, so once we have that thing uh, cut, before we actually go on and cut the bottom part, I wanna do the same thing up for these guys. So go over and just select one of these corners. like this like I said it's a bit of a repetitive work but since I do want to have all of these as individual elements or individual uh, UVs and not have any overlapping UVs I have to deal with this feel free if you don't want to watch this just skip ahead it's just gonna be uh, me doing this thing it's gonna loop cut redo again actually just so you don't have actually have to watch me do this for the next five minutes or so i'm gonna stop the video in here and as soon as i'm finished with the cutting uh, of just doing this i'll be right back with you guys so we can continue all right here we go so what i've done is just i went over and did the cuts on all top sides all, everything down on the bottom as well so now the only thing that's left over is to go ahead and cut in on the sides here or on the bottoms control l to get the loop cut 
and now we want to have one more cut going down the line of these bars so one everywhere it won't actually matter where the seam is because inside uh, substance painter when we start uh, texturing this this will be covered up so it won't actually be seen but um, it's a good idea to put the seam where it will most likely be uh, less visible so something like this on the inside all right so we cut these guys we cut that one now what we need to do is go over and make a cut something like there here and go across there we go just like that to about there so loop and cut do the same thing on the bottom and this will allow us to unwrap the bottom cylinder here the bottom bar and just so we make it even easier for unwrapping to proceed what we're going to do is go over here and just cut one of these guys as a seam as well so cut in there maybe coming over here cut over there do the same thing on this side as well so over here loop cut down here loop and cut and i need to add in this extra edge here as well loop and cut and the only thing missing over here is i need to have one more loop going on this side and one more continuing over here so loop and cut all right so apparently as it looks right now we have all the cuts so i'm just going to hit unfold and see what we get all right so the only thing that's missing i'm guessing is over here we missed out on one of these lines so loop and cut unfold oh over here as well so loop and cut unfold again there we go so everything is clean now repack it like this at the moment it's a bit jumbled so let's go ahead and do a bit of cleanup so just rotate around and here's the thing if uh, we were using this thing as anything else than metal we would probably want to have very very straight lines and we can do that but in this case it won't really be needed but if you want to do it then all you got to do is just go in here select a couple of these guys uh, hit the loop control l then hit this button that will make the edge horizontal or that will constrain the horizontal edges so once we optimize this thing it will try to make it as horizontal as possible and if we have everything uh, like this this is going to be perfect horizontal but in our case since this is going to be metal it's not really really uh, that important we just need to get it to be at least close to that but if uh, we want to have uh, proper bakes with sharp edges then in that case you probably want to have perfect or st uh, perfectly straight lines and just like i showed you the way to do that is select the edges that you want to have either horizontal or vertical straight and apply one of these guys in this case i just want to get them all more or less horizontally close there we go and once we have that done select everything unhide everything so show select these guys rescale and back together there we go i could probably get these guys horizontal at least so let's see all right loop make them horizontal the same thing over here so again one two three four five six and seven all right just selected damn it all right loop 
And now if I select just uh, these two, hit them with the optimize, that's, that will make them straight like this. Okay, repack together, there we go, perfect. We're gonna save this. And now let's get back into 3ds Max. So inside 3ds Max, we're gonna select what we created, the model that we have, and we're gonna delete this one. Now we're gonna go import and import the model that we uh, just unwrapped. We're gonna choose the chair model and click open. This will import it back into our scene. As you can see, it's still keeping the same naming convention. Import it in. All right, we got this thing. Let's just uh, quickly check it out. Uh, apply an unwrap UVW map on top of it. Open up the UV editor, and we're gonna see that we have everything in here unwrapped properly. All right, so that's what we need. Great, now right click and we're gonna enable poly. I'm gonna give him the same color so I can actually see what is going on. There we go. Now, I'm gonna check my um, layers here. Select this, they're in the low poly. And what I want to do now is control V and create a copy of this and put them in a new layer and call this high poly. Now, since the way that we created the geometry in here is a clean geometry, we can simply add a turbo smooth and increase the geometry for it. I'm gonna hide the low poly and now in here, select my uh, frame LP and name it frame underscore HP. And for the seat, just create it as an underscore HP as well. So for this, what I'm going to do is get this, select. All right, we just hit that thing. So with the turbo smooth, we can put in two iterations. Do the same thing over here, two iterations. And we have this thing prepped up. Now, before we go into Substance Painter and start doing the last bit of actually texturing this, what I want to do is prepare one last thing. And that would be to add some uh, individual materials. Now, if you imported this thing fr uh, from the export, uh, from the UV uh, unwrapped model, what you're going to have is a standard material here applied as a default. So I'm just going to create one more copy of this standard material, not a V-Ray material. So this one I'm going to call uh, base or let's call it metal legs, metal frame. And this second one will be called seat. All right, just so we make it a bit easier to see, let's just give this thing a bit of a bluish color. Now for the seat, I'm going to apply this material to it and for the metal legs i'm going to apply this metal to the frame i'm going to do the same thing with the low poly version as well so this thing will have the metal frame applied to it and this thing will have the second seat metal or seat material applied to it all right Awesome. So now with this done, what we want to do is select my low poly model like this and export it out. So export selected, call this thing, whatever you want to, but let's just go with the same convention or naming convention. So let's call it chair underscore LP for low poly and click save. Now make sure you tick on export materials. This will export it with the two materials that we just applied to it and click on export smoothing groups since we don't actually have anything it's okay we don't need it so click export click okay do the same thing with the high poly but this time around instead of calling it lp we're just going to call it export selected and call it chair underscore hp for high poly click on save Again, click on Save Materials, Export, Done, and we're more or less ready to proceed with the texturing phase. So, hope you guys had fun and you 
manage to learn something new here. If you enjoyed the video, then please click the like button. And also, if you're not subscribed, now is a great time to do so. If you'd like to support me and the channel, the support links are below in the description of the video. And as always, thank you very much for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Peace.